So generally there are many billions of people in this world and among them how many <coughs> uh, believe in religion and how many don't, maybe it's about the same, but um, so those who believe in religion uh, have the same motivation for you know, <coughs> uh, believing in religion uh, or, or you know, practicing the religion or teachings. Um, so they you know, practice you know, thinking that if they do, uh, they will find the happiness they want and they will be free from the uh, suffering they don't want. And so not, it's not only to do with the Buddhist, you know, you know, even if you are Buddhist or not, as long as you believe in some kind of religion, I think we all have the same part, wanting to have happiness and not wanting any sufferings. Uh, for example, those who believe in God, <coughs> think that if I you know, take refuge in the God, then the God will give me the happiness that I, that I want. <coughs> and as a Buddhist, we take refuge in the Buddha, and the Buddha has shown or taught um, you know, uh, uh, the virtues and non-virtues, you know, what are to be adapted and what are to be abandoned. And if we listen to his teachings, 
and follow his teachings, then uh, you know, we'll find the happiness we want. So with that hope, then we take refuge in the Buddha. Um, so, so as a Buddhist, you know, we believe that Buddha has uh, the power to uh, you know, show us uh, the path, explain us, you know, what is you know, um, good, what is bad, uh, what is to be adapted, and what is to be you know, cultivated or abandoned, and so forth. Uh, but we don't believe that Buddha, you know, uh, has the power to give us the happiness and take away our suffering. And so if we work hard, you know, <clears throat> according to Buddha's advice, uh, we, if we do something, you know, physically, verbally, or mentally, uh, uh, to follow the teachings of the Buddha, uh, then you know, definitely we will find the happiness we want and we'll be free from the suffering we don't want. And so anyway, uh, the same thing uh, is that uh, uh, we all want to have happiness and don't want any suffering and for that reason we take refuge in the Buddha. And uh, so those who believe in God as a creator, creator uh, thinks that everything is created by God, right? The happiness and suffering. So if you take refuge in the God, then God will you know, give you uh, the happiness we want. You know? And therefore that the hope you know, and you take refuge in the God or follow God's advice. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so whether we, whatever kind of religions we believe in, uh, we follow that religion uh, because we want to have happiness and don't want any sufferings, right? And uh, uh, so if the benefit of uh, believing in one kind of religion you know, is that uh, you know, if, if we face some difficulties, then there is something that you know, we can call for help or you know, that we can um, you know, put our hope on. <coughs> so I don't know about those who don't believe in any religions. <coughs> And also, uh, we have to identify what is the happiness that, the, that we want and what is the suffering that we don't want. Uh, so, the, the, the description of the suffering that we don't want, there are many different kinds of suffering. Generally, we say, the suffering of sight existence that is the biggest one. And then particularly the sufferings of the lower realms. So right now we are going through uh, the samsaric sufferings of the, of the sight existence. So do we think that we are experiencing the samsaric you know, suffering? <laughs> And so from early in the morning to the, uh, to the late night, you know, uh, the, the, time, the time goes by, um, you, know, you know, with uh, barely uh, things, you know, uh, working in the way that we want, you know, so that's called suffering. Right. Sometimes they work very, very well, they want, sometimes it doesn't work, they are stuck here, you know. So it never happens in the, the way we want, right? If there's something go maybe one day, two days, then next day something will be. Can you? 
So you know, there are many um, <coughs> undesirable feelings in there that we experience, right? Uh, from you know, uh, from you know, early in the morning, from the time we wake up until we go to sleep. And so somebody is uh, and asks, what is the samsara? What is the definition of samsara? And then, so, then the other person said, uh, so um, so having all this problem, you know, is the, uh, the definition of the samsara. <laughs> so the sufferings you know, can, have, can have different uh, degrees or different levels. Small, medium, great, and so forth. So, right now we are born in cyclic existence. And what caused us to be born in the cyclic existence are the, you know, the karma and delusion. The delusion you know, is the ignorance, not knowing. Example. Before we don't know how you turn on this microphone. This is ignorant. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> but it is. It's That's ignorance. Right? If there's something big ignorant, small ignorant, it doesn't matter. If I don't speak English very well, this is also ignorant. You guys don't read Tibetan, this is also ignorant. No, this ignorance is lot. Then you get that, I don't know. Then you get one, I don't know, Shawan, Shawan, Jui. Shawan, Jui, and then less at the time. So because of not knowing, then we engage in, in uh, karma and action, and then by creating and uh, by engaging in action, then we create the karma. And so the imprint you know, of that karma and action is left in the consciousness or mind. So whenever that imprint meets with the condition, then uh, the result will ripen. So since beginning last lifetime till now, we have created so many different kind of you know, karma. So we have created a karma you know, to be born as human being, to be born as uh, you know, birds, you know, to be born as uh, you know, cow and dog and so forth. <laughs> so you know, when, when, when that karma, you know, the, the imprint of that karma meets with the condition, then it will be born you know, as a, you know, the bird or donkey or whatever. And so one of our past life uh, sentient being you know, has created the karma you know, to be born as human being, and then when that karma, when that karma met with the condition, then now we are born as human beings. And then so the main cause you know, for being born as a human being you know, is the, uh, the virtuous action or virtuous karma. And so right now if we create a good uh, and a virtuous karma, then there is a hope you know, for us to be born as a human being again. And so if we are born as human being again, then we can become better and better and better and better, and then eventually be free from cycle existence. So if we are free from cyclic existence, then we will not you know, have any kind of difficulties that we are facing now. So what doesn't allow us to be free from cyclic existence is the delusion, so we have to abandon that. And what 
what uh, helps us to be free from self existence is the virtue. So we should create that. Uh, so today you have this uh, thought or motivation or thought of wanting to come to the center. And, <clears throat> and so from that, that moment you, know, uh, you have that thought and then you started to come here, all this in a way it becomes a virtuous action until you get here. And then you come here and then you sit, you know, in, uh, try to sit in the cross leg and bearing all these pains in the knee and you're creating even more merits like that. Also you can do that, let's do this, you know. You know, Tara, Tara, you do it. Yeah, so just like the Tara, you can stretch in the leg, his legs. <laughs> And so you create uh, or accumulate virtue you know, in this way. So if, if you uh, make even one prostration, you accumulate a great amount of merit. And so when you make prostration, if your body touches, you know, when your body touches the, the ground, the amount of the ground uh, that your body touch, you know, so however many atoms you know, of the earth there is, you know, equal to that number of the uh, atom of the earth uh, that your body is covering, and that, that much you know, matter you accumulate. And so when you put your palm on the ground, you, know, you have to close your hands or fingers. And so if you spread your fingers, then you might create a karma to be born as birds. <laughs> because birds have to do that, right? <laughs> also, if you put this hand to the this, they create the cause to the cows. Cows are there, right? <laughs> <coughs> Therefore, you put this hand, this, you know, hand is also this. That just you not put under that. Then you can put, you know, over sort of here, and here, here, and just go like this. Then also, don't let let you you tired. You say, I'm tired. Let me let. This also makes you get to come out to snack. No, one here, no, one here, no, one here, no, and then come to your arm, right? So, you know, when you make prostration, you, you know, fall down and then you have to, you know, stand up right away. If you lie down for too long, you feel tired, then you might create a karma to the bone snake. And then, Masha is my eye, I suboy, I touch you, they don't know, because you are good, 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 So then when you stand up, you, know, you stand up straight, um, <clears throat> of course, you know, if you are not healthy or sick, you know, then that's exception, but you know, otherwise you should try to, you know, uh, stand up straight. But today that gave us at the Sashi, not to lay low, Namjumar's own tongue, Nimachiki, Chauka, Lemajina, Chichi, Chigila, and they are given you know, over it. So if we know how to create the uh, virtue, then, you know, <clears throat> anything, you know, can turn, can be turned into a virtue, so can it create a virtue very easily, but if you don't know the right way, then while creating virtue, you might also end up creating a lot of you know, non-virtues. Kanjir Maji, Shoke na ya lan tham ngi khanda chundu chu shui his, right? Then the Shoke ya lan wa dang, and the support of Kala to the and the then Chowari wa tsuzu chi yu na, the asha mena yang, and the dal tsuzu chi, such a chikuna wa tindu le ya, shasun pi, and the nima tiri ita, and the tiri ita, um, so like I mentioned this before, um, you know, so when, when you wake up early in the morning, in the morning um, uh, if you, you, know, you, you take, you know, take a shower or bath or whatever, or brush your teeth and wash your face and then you know, go and make offerings if you have offerings. If not, then at least you know, make three prostrations. Uh, 
in front of the uh, altar or shrine that you have, and, and then you know, and then set up a motivation, thinking that uh, whatever I do today may become beneficial, you know, for others. And so if you, you know, start your day with that kind of good thought, then uh, everything that you do in the whole day becomes very good. <laughs> So if you don't have an author, then you know if you, you can just have a um, you know a prayer book and then just make a procession to the prayer book. And so that's because <coughs> that's a Dharma jewel, right? The representative of Dharma jewel. And the Gondaya man yagala mota. Maybe before we go back to 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 Tibet, you watch TV, fall asleep, you know something. When you chivai na ni ma man yagaya. あれ、チャンスピ。あ、テレスのカリチョスさんのたん。あれ、ドジャテチェナ。あれ、ジョバチェ。ヤポチェナ。あれ、カジワヤポチョモシャ。あれ、トゥソスンチェタンでソチコモ
and then the, the many you know, <coughs> of these are agreed by both of them. So before it was discovered by science, Buddha Shakyamuni had already explained uh, this is how this is and so forth. Sometimes you know, the only the Dalai Lama give to Buddha's image for the non-Buddhist people. He said, you think about this as a, as a skull, you know, I mean, that's a capacity, you know, so I'm telling you something, you know, yes, but Sanjay is not going to rest, so on the So sometimes his holiness mentions, you know, to the non-Buddhist you know, audience uh, that they can think of Buddha Shakyamuni as a, you know, as a great scientist, you know, think of him as a Buddha. Right. But then that's why, and so now this is like the Buddhist science. Usually the scientists they checking outside things, you know, Shuloko Zutu Chigilabas. The the generally scientists <coughs> they check, you know, on they investigate <coughs> on the external things. But the Buddhist science you know, says you know, to investigate on uh, the internal you know, minds. And uh, one of the greatest in us, in a Buddhist scientist you know, is uh, the Dharma Kirti. Who explained very clearly about <coughs> mind and cognitions and so forth. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so, um, so then the mind, in the mind there are two, right? Mind and the, the primary mind and the mental factors. And the mental factor there are 51 mental factors. And uh, so the, among them there are one, there are some you know, who, which are needed, some which are not needed, some which has, has to be uh, <coughs> abandoned and so forth. And so anyway, we, we talked about a few of them already. So the last time we, before that, we talked about the five only mental uh, only, uh, only factors. And then after that, then we were talking about the five object ascertaining mental factors, right? So all these mental factors are in our mind, in our continuum, and they are functioning you know, in there. So it's given a different name you know, to the mind, you know, which functions in a different ways. So it says, uh, which function the mind which functions this way is called this, and you know, which function in that way is called this, and so forth. Uh, and so then the, the five uh, object as tenement of factors. Uh, the first one is called aspiration. You know, the aspiration um, <coughs> is um, um, you know, it, it is the very wish you know, to be endowed you know, with this or that you know, of uh, desired things. Uh, so then and then the, the second one is the belief, and belief is it holds an ascertained object uh, or thing you know, to be just uh, the way it has been ascertained. And then the mindfulness you know, is it is a non forgetfulness you know, of the mind you know, with respect to familiar object. So whatever object that you have been familiar with. Keeping that in your mind and not letting it forget. <coughs> so if we don't have the, uh, uh, the, the mindfulness or memory, we will not be able to do a lot of the things. So we forgot things, right? They were also very important to know. You have to do meditation, you have to do. <coughs> so you need a good mindfulness when you do meditation. <coughs> And so today we're talking. We're going to be talking about uh, the meditative stabilization, the fourth one, right? Uh -huh. So it's in page thirty. If you have the textbook with you, 
um, is bottom of the page 30. It says meditative stabilization. It says regarding the entity of meditative stabilization, the compendium of knowledge says, what is uh, meditative stabilization? It is a uh, one pointedness of the mind with respect to an imputed things. It has the function of acting as support for the mind. What is she so much? Stop being in one minute, gentle than the bit. Fetch him by the water. It suggests that it has been said both. It is one pointedness of mind that within, uh, within observing an imputed thing. Kanje, Sam Ye Chila, then eh, some part of you must go to the top. Yamo something in the dinner, Sam Chila, or something, Sichi, but not us, Sam Temushila. So, <clears throat> so it is the mind that, that uh, will, you know, to which is, you know, which, which focuses on an object, and then you know, <clears throat> not letting it you know, be distracted from that object that it's focusing on. Manzo Ye Chila, some of the Nisha, that woman, you know, there was some common Russia. And so for us, it is very difficult you know, to focus on, 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 on a single object for a long time, right? It you know, uh, gets distracted, you know, our mind moves around all the time. So it is very difficult for it to you know, sit on an object for you a long time. You guys do one hour, 30 minutes, 40 minutes? Depends on what the object is. <laughs> <laughs> How about we can watch a movie? Very serious movies. <laughs> I, I like very serious movies. Yeah. You know, the, usually I like the serious wild movies. You know, the Fiona, the little girl, yeah. one day she looked in the, in the living room, she found some very wild movies there. Kajin, are you watch this wild movies? I said, yes. What? You told us all the time, don't do one and see. You watch one and see. One and movies. I don't know. One and see. Action. Action. Or action movies. Yeah, Johnny. No. There's something talk, talk, and just body. What? One bed is like, anyway. Yeah, this is also what he mentioned, you know, depends on what the object. Now I talk about the, the, the object for the meditation. How long is the meditation, you know? Mm -hmm. Even if we say, oh, I'm going to go into meditation, you know, some, some people stay here, the city is, you know. But sometimes, even, you know, we can just check. Maybe we just realize that the Buddha statue over here, just try to learn that. Then we, first we focus this, that same day should not, that, so uh, when you're concentrating or focusing on an object like, uh, let's say, it's, you know, the Buddha's uh, statue, and you have one mind you know, focusing you know, on the statue, then you have to also have other mind, you know, which is you know, which is watching over the mind, uh, you know, which is focusing. <coughs> Uh, on the object, you know, the Buddha's, you know, the statue. So that mind, you know, is called the introspection. So if we use that introspection, you know, to watch, you know, our mind, and we find out that it doesn't sit around, you know, sit in a, <coughs> around for a long time, it always moves around, you know, so, you know like five minutes, ten minutes at max. So, I mean, like virtuous object, right? so try to put your mind on a virtuous object, and it's very difficult. Uh, either you know, our mind is distracted or our mind is just sitting there idle, you know, doing nothing. And so, the meditative stabilization you know, is something that is. Uh, uh, occurred by all of you know, all of the practitioners, and whether it is Buddhist or non-Buddhist. Uh, so, putting on the mind in one object and not letting it you know, go around you know, to different places is called concentration. Uh, so, if that kind of mind is conjoined you know, by 
uh, uh, refuge, then that becomes the Buddhist concentration. What, what? What do you mean by that? That thing is said, Kanji, Shiba Tembo, and the Yer Kanji, let me go in that. The other dead thing, yet they are semi general mining, semi large or mining, semi huge or mining. That's semi much more tempo than the others. And so the concentration you know, is, the, you know, is the mind you know, that focuses on the object um, you know, uh, firmly and you know, without um, uh, being distracted you know, by other things or without you know, forgetting you know, the object you know, of the uh, meditation or concentration. So if, if we don't have the concentration, uh, then we will not be able to Recognize the object in a fully way. And the better child, when I monona, I have a such a year, and the other business was being my best. My And for example, if um, in the dark you bring a lamp, you know, like a candle lamp, not a uh, electric lamp, you know, of course, that is still, right? So it doesn't uh, flicker, and so it doesn't flicker, so it, you know, it's very clear, you can see things very clearly. But if it is like a candle light uh, flame, then which is, uh, uh, and then there's a wind blowing in that place, and then the, 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 um, uh, the lamp, you know, the light you know, flickers, and that makes uh, uh, it not very easy for us to see the objects clearly. So that uh, the, the lamp in a flickering you know, is the uh, example you know, of the uh, of a mind moving around all the time, not you know, uh, uh, focusing on objects single pointedly. So if we don't have that kind of concentration or mind being able to focus on, on the object uh, you know, single pointedly for a long time, then uh, we will not be able to develop the wisdom uh, cognizing or uh, realizing that object. This example is in the north and the India, they use the lamps or something. Now they have the actors, you know. What can you and it think is there? They can just send them watch. And it does think it's men think it's never is that another young or gentleman. So, anyway, the, the concentration in it is the firm mind, and because we don't have that concentration, uh, therefore, we're not able to do our practice well. And it think is a thing in the tonality, she need to she need to let out of out of the time. So, when, uh, if we have the concentration, then we can have the calm abiding. And then with the combining, we can develop you know, the special insight, and then our mind can develop you know, a lot. So if we have uh, concentration of combining, then you know we can you know, do our practice you know, as uh, long as we want, and it will be very stable. Now, for example, you guys check. So you can check you know, your mind, uh, so the mind, the thinking may have become enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings. So that mind, how long can you hold it? Uh, uh, so just just that mind, you know, just that mind manifesting, none of the other minds are manifesting at that time, just that thought, thinking may achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, and then see how long that can last. Just two seconds, mm -hmm. two minutes, <laughs> then gone. So that's, uh, if we don't have uh, the concentration, then that happens, so therefore concentration is very important. So 
So the objective feature of metadata stabilization is specified to be an, uh, an imputed thing because when cultivated metadata stabilization, one holds the mind to an object of observation that is imputed by the mind. And so furthermore, although there appears to be many uh, enumerations you know, of objects and observation for metadata stabilization, when condensed, it is taught that there are four categories. And the thing is that Gomela and the time also Nabi Chevayana thing is Gomsen Lupala too. And the Tar Saki Kurado today, of course, no, not good. She chatted it, and the year can be another ten minutes. She thought it is Gomtong to show you as well. So you can use any kind of object you know, to, uh, <coughs> um, you know, to develop you know, concentration. Uh, of course, you know, as a Buddhist, we are more encouraged you know, to take the Buddha statue you know, as an object you know, for uh, military civilization. And so if, if we use the, you know, the statue, the Buddha statue as an object you know, to uh, develop the concentration of military civilization, and of course you know, that helps you know, to um, develop your uh, concentration of meditative stabilization, but also at the same time because you are thinking about you know, the image of the Buddha and uh, thinking about Buddha. Right? So as you are watching and you know, looking at the image of the Buddha, you are thinking about the Buddha as well. And just by thinking about the Buddha, you accumulate merit. So you know you are doing two things at, a, at, a, at the same time. So uh, therefore, it's more beneficial to use the Buddha statue as an object you know, for your Meditation uh, it mentioned about all this the importance you know, of having concentration. And uh, <coughs> so if it's very important, then how do you uh, achieve it and so forth? So that's what it is here. And it is Shoba Namja will be passed, Numa Namja will be passed, and it Chabi will be Kabi will be the series. What? And so there are these uh, four different kinds of now the um, <coughs> object of observations. It says object of observation for purifying behavior, object of observation, object of observation for purifying. Afflictions, uh, pervasive object of observation, you know, object of uh, obs uh, observation for developing skills. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, um, this is the object of observation for improvement behavior. So, like um, uh, um, uh, uh, using the, an object you know, to uh, like reduce or to eliminate you know, attachment from your mind. And so the object of observation you know, for uh, reducing or you know, eliminating the attachment would be to you know, use uh, like um, uh, a filthy or ugly objects. Uh, for example, when we uh, buy a new thing, you know, uh, uh, when we have something very new, we are so attached. <coughs> You get that? Well, I, for me, if I like something, I got that. I love touch. You know, I always follow them. For example, you know, for my computer, I don't know, 2005 or something. You no, know, I got a small computer, and now this is my first computer. I never touched that computer. Or this laptop. Yeah, laptop. Mm -hmm. Then very, you know, I'm very touchy, you know, I don't want to, you know, usually we have hands, a lot of oily, you know, <laughs> touch a little bit, they're very dirty. I'm very touched that, you know, I am, he's very also good computer. Usually thumb channel is between the few things, you know, I don't know, they think that, can I kill you, then somebody doesn't walk, you have to fix it. 
Somebody he's not there, some one day, I'm coming, he said, you have to do that, <laughs> you know, I'm finger, you know, pushing them by this, finger, all the fingers, uh, put, what is that? Finger pets. Finger pets. I have not touched it. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can do <laughs> he, he, he was a little upset. He said, no, 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 I'm going to buy the, what do you call it, the cream pig? Cream pig. Cream pig. Cream pig. Now, I was, you know, and I was very, very, that little, that remote. Skin color remote. And uh, we call it and scratch. Yeah, scratch mm. of that. And I feel very sad, you know. Oh. Because I get so touched. Mm. Right? Then everywhere there, right? Then also, the thing of the touch, you know, which other was, can't even have the touching on the was, should be touching, should think the was. So that's uh, the external objects, right? You know, when we own that, you know, we become very attached to it at the beginning. Right? Then we think about you guys. We have you have car, right? Yeah. When you buy car that day, you have not touched. You don't want to any scratch to your car, right? Mm. You don't want to put more, you know, what you call this, done or anything. Wrong. Right? You have to touch. You keep this very clean. Maybe a couple of months, <laughs> not long, you know. <laughs> but this very touch. We have very strong touch, right? Now, now how you? And so how do we reduce that attachment? You know, how do we um, remove that attachment? And so, you know, so we have to think about, you know, the fact that uh, it is just imputed by our mind. And um, it, it, it is, you know, it can be broken, it can be scratched, it can be, you know, <clears throat> uh, destroyed and so forth. So we have to think about that fact also. And so if we, keep, if we think, you know, that uh, it should be like that all the time, you know, very clean, very nice, very shiny, or not any scratch and so forth, then you know, we will have so much attachment. But if we accept that, you know, it can happen, it will, be, it will happen and so forth, then we will not be that, that much, that much you know, attached. Well, we was in a kit, something with a very nice bed. You know, very nice. Then, bed is too nice, we don't sleep there. You know? <laughs> we don't disturb, you know. We don't really have touch. Okay, anyway, another kanji, that tango thing, maybe a tow, and it's chapa kissing a year, maybe chapa chun tongue, that tough number is it. You know, I'm going to show up on the bus. And so that's the first one, the object of observation for developing <coughs> skill are taught to be in many types of observation of the five behaviors and so forth. So anyway, so first one is that's the object of observation for purifying behaviors. And so, for example, like, you know, the attachment, you know, uh, by thinking about the object of the attachment, and you purify the attachment to that. And so uh, then the object of observation for purifying affliction you know, is, uh, uh, is the mind that, that uh, focuses on um, uh, the, the seat you know, of the delusion and then you know, uh, purifies the affliction like that, so the, the delusions like that. And the chapter was said that 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 so a pervasive object of observation you know, is uh, uh, the object you know, that is provided on, on both of those, the first two, number one and two, and uh, since provided you know, on, uh, over all the objects. And then, then there's, there's also the object of observation for development skill are taught to be like infinite types. Observation of the five arrogance, observation of the eight constituents, observation of the twelve sources, and observation of the twelve links of dependent rising and so forth. Okay. 
And so, by observing on these objects, and then you develop you know, the mind, you know, um, uh, meditative stabilization. And then, like for example, the, uh, the object you know, of the desire or attachment, uh, by focusing on the object of attachment and uh, desire, and you think you know, how it is not um, you know, prominent, and you know, how it is you know, disintegrating moment by moment, and so forth. You know, so. Okay. Tadi wala chido, ani tisang ata kasi ka misi, misi yung chubo la tni ani gumbores, so matindi yung res, tindi mares kasi kung tingin to gumbat eh, ani yisye, tingin to chay yisye yung res, wansi kesa tna, wansi mojib tingin to gumbat siro ba, ani tingin to chay yisye yung pachi, ani kung yel ay ani zamin do, tay yado kaya kare yung kare yung ane kicho res, tay ba ang gumbat tni ko sumal res ay ko na chido. Since nowadays it seems that there are some instructions in the ad odd with the wording of the Okankura scripture that clearly teach the method of performing uh, studying meditative meditation within observation of form appearing to be eye consciousness. However, Ayasanga clearly states that uh, meditative stabilization is not produced in, in sense consciousness, rather it is only produced in mental consciousness. <laughs> And then it says that moreover, this object of observation is not form appearing to a sense consciousness, rather it is only a mental object uh, imputed by the mind. Um, it says, well then, does the object of military civilization definitely uh, have to be a real object? And then the response is, is no. Uh, whether the object be real or erroneous, if one attentively familiarizes oneself with it um, um, you know, internally over and over again, clear appearance and non conceptuality uh, with respect to that object will arise. What the name being Kumala and you talk about the but the children are not living in the was the same thing to the park comes on you know that towards the end of the world. And so to prove that, and he says it is just as it has been said in Damakirti's commentary on Ignatius complaint about valid cognition. This is therefore utmost familiarization with whatever, whether real or unreal, results in a clear non conceptual mind when, the, when, the, when, the, when that familiarization is thoroughly completed. It says uh, the functional feature of the strategy is specified to be uh, acting as support for knowledge because through the force of analysis with the wisdom of individual investigation in an independence on common body in which the mind is internally set in a voice one achieves a special insight observing modes uh, and varieties. <laughs> So, um, so you know the karma biting, you know, or meditative service so and karma biting, as uh, it's karma in which the mind is internally set in the equipoise. So, there, uh, whenever one you know, um, develops that ecstasy, uh, the mental or physical ecstasy, you know, uh, through um, <coughs> concentrating on the object, and so that's the one we would have to develop you know, um, the calm abiding. So whatever object that one is uh, focusing with calm abiding, then you, you know, analyze on that object with the, the wisdom. So that's called the special insight. And so this is, there's more detailed explanation about this. Especially inside in Kamabai and especially inside in the the, the great uh, exposition of the stages of path to enlightenment by Lama Tsongkhapa. So if you wish to learn more, then you should read that. Uh, and, and so, uh, so this is uh, again, you know, the uh, wisdom depends on the meditative stabilization and concentration, and concentration um, depends you know, on the morality. Disciplines. So it says by depending on the um, uh, the training of the morality, then you develop another 
training of concentration, and you divide the brain training of concentration, you develop the training of wisdom. Training of wisdom.
reason you know, that is that is not contradicted that that is contradicted with the three uh, valid cognitions like the valid cognition itself the direct valid cognition and uh, inferential valid cognitions. Now, for example, like if we eat food, you know, our stomach will be filled, will be filled from hunger, right? Uh, that will not be contradicted by any of the valid cognitions, right? So just like that, you know, so if you do a virtue, you will experience happiness. You will experience uh, 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 the happiness as a result. And so that is not uh, kind of contradicted by any of the valid conditions. And then the fourth is for the reason of nature. So then like the nature, you know, is um, is natural is natural for the fall, for the water to fall and then the fire to blaze, right? You know, so blaze up and then water to fall down. You know, so that's the nature. So there isn't anything that is not you know, uh, included within these four reasonings. Uh, so, uh, so if we you know, analyze any kind of things with these four reasonings, then mm -hmm. it will all be clear and there will be no doubt about it. So it says, hence it is function of future specifies overcoming doubt. What? It's a function of the, the wisdom. So that's as the foremost omniscient of Tsongkhapa says in his beginning and end in the stanza 14. He says that having properly examined day and night in the meaning of what has been heard uh, with the four types of reasoning, may I eradicate doubt with the analytical awareness that arises from contemplating the objects that are to be uh, contemplated. What? And it says discussion of the category of object and manufacturers. What is the reason for calling these five manufacturers uh, intention and so forth uh, as the object as attaining? Now, since these manufacturers hold an object through apprehending the individual features of the object, they are said you know, to be individually certain objects. And then after that, uh, the eleven and the virtues manufacturers, and these are the um, the virtues that are uh, needed. Yes. Can I, I? I have just a question about the about uh, meditative stabilization. I can understand why the other four belong to the object ascertaining category, but I can't understand why that one is there. Because the, if the definition is that mental factors hold the object through apprehending individual features of the object, therefore they are individually ascertaining objects. But in meditative stabilization, it's not even a real object, right? It's right. imputed by the mind which means it's a conceptual, <coughs> it isn't a real object. Also, mm -hmm. the, by observing the features, I don't know. So object, like you said, it doesn't have to be real, right? Yeah. So, so it's the object, it's object, right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Through apprehending the individual features of the object. So any feature you just think of? Yeah, that's, that's what it's saying, right? But, uh, you, 
Tässä nyt tavoit samat syyset. Se on ollut monen ja jamaras. Juu monen ja jamaras. Tämä on vihreä tehdä. 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 So I mean, in reality, everything is imputed, right? Everything is imputed object, you know, whether it's object of the concentration or object of wisdom, it has to be imputed, right? Right. <laughs> So you don't, it doesn't have to be a real, you know, like uh, the the image you know, um, of the reflection in the mirror. Mm -hmm. you know, it's an object. It can be object. It doesn't. It's, it's not real. Right? It's just a reflection you know, of uh, uh, of that object, you know, the face or whatever that appears in the mirror. It's not a real. It's just a reflection. Of that object, uh, but by you know taking that as an object, you can still develop you know, uh, wisdom and concentration. And then again, this uh, when we talk about the imputed you know, object here, it's not necessarily talking about you know uh, how everything is you know, empty of inherent existence and it's merely imputed by mind. It's not talking about that. So as long as you can you know, impute with your mind, you know, as such and such, and then you know, whether that that imputed thing, you know, is real or not, you know, if we, you know, um, uh, as long as it serves as an object, you know, for developing the concentration, that's good enough. And the and so it says like here, right? Uh, the in a Dharma it says that therefore Atma's familiarization with whatever, whether real or unreal, results in a clear non conceptual mind uh, when the familiarization is thoroughly completed. Then my second question uh, just I it's hard for me to understand this like conceptual basically when it says imputed by the mind it means a conceptual thing, right? It must be a conceptual object. Mm -hmm. So then also by holding like that for a long time, it becomes non-conceptual. I don't understand that part. Mm -hmm. So I was just curious, is there some explanation why concentrating again and again at a, for a long period of time on a conceptual object suddenly results in non-conceptual mm -hmm. awareness? The Quran is a in it. The Quran is a トパラス。で、トパトメシ、トパラス。トパトメシ、トパラス。で、トパインザ。だから、だ、だ、で、シェディ、だ、これ、デバマイバで、デブマズマジラ。だ、ズマジ、タブ、チュ、ズマジ。
So why are you so surprised you know, to see the conceptual changing in the non conceptual That's what that's that's what is supposed to be happening, right? If you meditate on it. That's so first everything is conceptual to us, right? Yes. So anything we see is conceptual. Mm -hmm. You know, like all, all the realizations supposed you have is conceptual. Mm -hmm. Then as you meditate on, on on that more and more and more and more, then it becomes you know, when it becomes direct realization, then it becomes non conceptual, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's the thing that I'm yeah. confused about. I feel like if you... So you, you're saying like if it's conceptual, it should remain conceptual all the time? I, I don't understand why... It conceptual, could... it's nothing to do with the object, it's to do with the mind. Yeah. Right? Conceptual yeah. and non-conceptual is to do with the mind. Yeah. So when your mind becomes more familiar, then it becomes non-conceptual. When it's not familiar, it's conceptual. So when you... So when you develop your mind, and your mind changes, the quality of your mind changes to become non-conceptual. Hmm. Just, just think about it, okay? So first it is not clear to you, you know, and you have to apply reasonings or you know something you know, to, to to see that and then after you keep on Checking and checking, checking, checking on that, and then it becomes very clear to you. Now you don't need to rely on any, depend on any other things to cognize that. You cognize it directly, so that becomes non-conceptual. Is it like, um, just for example, maybe to try to make an analogy? Is it like uh, learning to walk or something like that? When you are a baby and you first learn to walk, it takes a lot of concentration, yeah. and you have to think. But nowadays, you know, it's been years. You, you don't yeah. even. It requires no thought. Mm -hmm. It just automatically occurs. Is it like that? Yeah, the familiar, familiarity, you know, familiarity, familiarity, you know, it's it's just like that, yeah. When I tamu ato jama tapa jora was, tamu jama tapa tar the jora. Tar shuma jama tapa ngai su tuzuma na tar the jeba the kotha ngai mo pa tuzuma na kaji. Kola ni ju tere jeba kori ngai jora was. So, for example, like when you you know <coughs> come to understand, when you try to understand that sound is impermanent, you might have to. Uh, and apply reason. Oh, sound must be impermanent because it's a product. And so by the reason being a product, you understand that it's impermanent. But then as you keep on meditating on that again and again, and then later you come to realize that it is impermanent directly, then you don't have to depend on the reasoning being product. You know, you know it right away that sound is impermanent, so that is non-conceptual. Look, I'll just think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. I, I think it's, okay. it sounds like a learning. more familiarness, right? Like learning, yeah. Yeah, familiarize. Well, that's okay. Look at that. Then maybe not too much. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, my question is, what is the difference between um, reasoning of dependence and logical reasoning? They both sound to me like they're kind of like logic of um, if this, then that. So I'm wondering what the difference is. Two people pass at the end, you call at the end of what? You, 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 um, so the reasoning you know, of dependence you know, is like um, you talk about you know why why it is like this because it is like this so you depend you know how you know it is it is a result because it depends on a cost mm -hmm. and so that's kind of the reasoning of dependence and then logical reasoning here actually actually it means like that's how it is, you know, that's how things are. In reality, that's how things are. Like, you know, um, like, you know, we can still talk about the cause and effect here also. Like, you know, this is the result, this is, this is, you know, the, the result, and this, this came from the cause. 
And so because it's a result, therefore it is necessarily a convert. So that's how it is. That's how it is. And that cannot be contradicted by any, any, any kind of parts. So if it's not real, then the valid cognition is the real mind, where the mind you know, that sees the things as they are. And if, that, if it is real, then you know, it should be seen by that mind. So if it is not real, then it will not be seen by that mind. So it will not, you know, it will contradict with that mind. So as long as it doesn't contradict with that valid cognition, then it's, that's how it's, you know, that's how things are. You know? so that's what he's talking about in the logical reasonings. And so like, you know, how, what do we mean by contradicting to our valid cognition? Like for example, when you're driving, and then you're, you're passing by these trees, you know, when you're driving, you feel like you're, the trees are moving. You know, of course, actually it's you who's moving, right? But you feel like the trees are moving, right? And so, like, uh, there is the mind who knows that, oh, the, the trees are not moving, it's me who's moving. You know, the, my car is moving. And so, if I, it feels like the mind, you know, is moving. But there's one mind also which thinks, that, oh, the trees are moving, right? And so, so the mind which thinks that the trees are not moving, it's me who's moving, contradicts with the mind which thinks the trees are moving. And that's what we mean by contradicting. Okay. So the, the first one, you know, is uh, uh, particularly to the attachment, and then the second one is you know, general, you know, to general effects, general uh, delusions, like you know, any kind of all kinds of delusions. So in the Lamrim, in a great exposition of the states of Pathway and Admin, but Amsung Kapo says that uh, it is it is the you know, the seed you know, of the delusions, you know, where the delusion comes from. You know, the where the delusion comes from, like you know, the ignorance you know, is the root of the, all the delusions, right? So all the delusions that comes come from uh, the ignorance. And so, so it's actually you know, observing uh, on all uh, all the delusions in general. And then the first one it says, you know, in, in, uh, particularly on the, the attachment. And so there, you um, you meditate on the object you know, of the uh, attachment, so object that you are attached to, you know, so that object that you are attached to, and then see how it is impure or you know, how it is impermanent and so forth. So that's so that's one. Yeah, the first one. Yeah. And then second one is the, the seed of the delusion, so which here is referring to the root or the you know the cause of all the delusions, which is the ignorance. So observe observation of four purifying afflictions. So you, 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 you go into you know you observe you know, or focus you know, on the uh, the seed of the delusions. Okay. Yeah. So and then you imagine something you imagine like wisdom or like you are just something positive in this thing. But the Yahoo the Kasama. Tava, then you want to do Charisama, 
たぶん日本語が日本前まで、日本語を毎日、日本毎日こそなんだけです。And so here you're thinking about the, the contrary to the、uh, delusions, right? So you know, thinking that the delusions are not good and, and、uh, how it is you know,、uh, unreal and so forth. And so if you think about that, and that will help you know, to reduce the delusions. 日本語が日本語だった。So think about you know, the, the disadvantages you know, of the delusions. You know. Okay? I think now we stop. Also, then,、uh, Wednesday, Thursday, do we have to keep one class next week or not? Wednesday, Thursday. 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 It's a good show us to know if people are able to come、I'm, next Wednesday or not because of Thanksgiving being the following day. However, I guess we'll be leaving on Saturday, so this will be the last class if、oh. we don't have it next week. Until he comes back in January. So, sort of, wait, you know, weighs those out. But we should let him know tonight, probably so that everybody in the class knows whether they come or not next week. Isn't that Tarpon? Tarpon, there's a Pooja Depot. Yeah. Oh, we don't have class tonight, never mind. Where, where? Is it Wednesday? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a Pooja Depot. Yeah, it is. Really? Yeah. Okay, so, then it's a Pooja Depot. Is it Wednesday? Is it sure it's Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, so okay, we don't have class anyway. Then no class. <laughs> yeah. I'm on vacation. Then I'm going to India. Then、uh, even this, you know, Wednesday class is more complicated because the US go back again, study more, read again. You know, also, that the whole month is a loss, you know. They watch it, they don't know what they lost. So, study, you know, I mean, we can also read you know,、uh, what we have not gone through.、Uh, furthermore, now, like you know, the 11 virtues and、uh, all this, and、uh, other, other mental factors that we have not discussed yet. And the other thing is that the blood is not going to be able to get the blood. So, you can keep on reading again and again. So, if you read this, it says if you read this nine times, then you will have nine understandings. Nine times, nine times. 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 Because we don't, we don't understand the first one, then we have more, more teachers come up. Therefore,、uh, also read some, you know, the attendance book, we study very long, we study, and read some other. You know, if you like, particularly, you like to share it. You can share it with us, and then you can share it with us. So if you study about,、uh, I mean, if you read the, the, the London book, the London book, The States of Party, Lambert, and Alma Sukhava, where it explains about the concentration of wisdom, and it's very, very clear, very you know, detailed explanations of all this. Okay? Thank you, guys. I miss you. When do you come back, Ashila? I'm coming back, I think, January 10th. Ashila? It's too late to ask something? <laughs> Not today. Not too late. What do you have? You have to wait until January. <laughs> 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 so last week we talked about fear as being a good thing, like something that can help you for, to avoid negative actions. And, you know, we talked about this last Wednesday. It's not, well, it's not mentioned here at all as a virtuous mental factor. And also, His Holiness in the past, when he taught about avoiding you know, practicing discipline, he, he said that when we practice discipline or avoiding negative actions and benefiting others, It should, he said it should not be based on fear. He said it should be based on understanding like, the consequences of whatever action we do. So His, his Holiness said that it shouldn't be done based on fear. And so it seems like that's what we were talking about last week. I feel no. Jibos. She answered. Jibos. She answered. 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 So, I don't know what、uh, we 
I mean, there's no exact word like fear, right? There's no exact word like fear that we talked about last time. I think we talked about, um, like, we talked about being modest and being, you know, feeling embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Like, Clara says, oh, I'm afraid that he might say something if I do this. I'm afraid that he might say something, therefore I should not do that. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I'm afraid this is not good for me, so therefore I should not do that kind of fear, you know. So here in the, in the 11 virtues, it explains about that, that's embarrassment. So the shame and embarrassment, so that kind of fear, you know. So that fear is, is, is good. And so it is explained here in the 11 virtues. So that's what we're talking about, that fear. Not like just fear in particular, but fear thinking that, oh, somebody will say something, so I should not do that. But usually the embarrassment follows it. When we say that we're afraid of something happening, that's the fear. No, there's, a, there's two, like you That's said. right, yeah. One is the subsequent yeah. to something happening and your face turns red, that's the, the embarrassment. The other one is like sometimes translated as dread, like moral dread, which is if I were to do that mm. and someone saw me do it, that would be a shameful. So you yeah. dread yeah. to yeah. do the thing in front of others or yeah. for people to know that you've done something, like the fear of being found out. Prevents you from doing it. So when we normally, like the normal context of fear is not good. That's not what we're referring to, right? No, it can be good also. Some in, in some cases. In some cases, yeah. Yeah, but you know, like like we talked about refuge, right? Mm -hmm. And then refuge, you have to have fear towards the soften of the psychic right. system, yeah. soften of the lower realms. Without that kind of fear, you will not take refuge in the you know in three jewels. So that fear is good. But when they when they talk about worry not good, isn't worry and fear very similar? I don't know. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can put it in a positive way also. I think right? it's e easier to just say that these two in this list here should be always uh, more related to some moral purpose. Mm -hmm. So it's a moral dread and moral shame. There's other type of shame and dread which has nothing to do with virtue. You know, if you just are embarrassed, you know, because you did something stupid in front of your boss at work or something like that, you know. Good, okay, but... Yeah, yeah. 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 It's good, but you know, you don't want to... All the time, that... Don't want to say something like this. 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 So you, you have to, you, of course it's good to have this doubt, you know, but then don't hang on to the doubt all the time, you know, so you come to, try to, come to that conclusion. Otherwise, you know, you, you will just keep on, you know, having that doubt, keep on having it, and then, you know, you will not um, come to understand anything. So you have, this is good, you know, you have to ask, the, and you have to have the doubt, and then you ask the question, and then you should come to understand. Um, so anyway, so like you know, Gisela said, like Andy said, you know, that kind of shame, and again, you know, you can have a positive shame and negative shame, you know, so, you know, so that's the shame that he's talking about here, mm -hmm. embarrassment, you know, it's the positive shame that makes you to do good things and prevents you from doing bad things, you know, so that kind of shame. So as long as it's related to virtue, yeah. right? That's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Gisela. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Hopefully, see you. Next year. Yeah. Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. Page thirty-nine. Do the cross track.
without teaching okay he's second rounder hoise sanjay ke tab bata hua hoise sanjay ke tab bata hua tab bata hua tab bata so the buddhist teaching will uh, uh, spread. Huh? spread yeah spread and many for all the same things tenje tenje yoga ke jendo wa shumi jagoris tenje yoga ke tenje tenda ten tenje yoga ke jo Mm. It is a cause for them. Then the then the yoyang you it is the cause of the opportunity of that yeah danger is like the opportunity yeah then the tamam may it be uh, may it be the cause of the opportunity of sending you meeting with the teaching of buddha and the teaching of buddha expanding and spreading and the samjaga dewa samjaga dewa jowa ne tam makhi ma Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So may mm-hmm. sentient beings become happy? No, net may sickness. No, no, it's simple. Oh, simple. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. 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 Lumbala neyu neyum net sinis ne ani me the me the me the country the not sinis yeah have no illness or also epidemics not, also not uh, war and no war yeah. lumbala means whole world not united states oh not this country for <laughs> lumbala yeah, usually yeah. means country but only the lumbala you know how is it lumbala how you to make this i don't know something something yeah okay anyway we or very very big big if we think real we get we can lot come up very good karma we cannot say this much karma so good job thank you very much hope so see you 2011 to yeah. yeah, we will go back in time <laughs> <laughs> okay those are these we do very good job you know holding come here lama sabar to come here we do very very good positive mm-hmm. Thank you. So this is your last year. The world ends this year. party at my house on the 23rd <laughs> okay